So, did you guys know that Skyward Sword HD comes out next week? <laughs> right? Like, time is flying, isn't it? Feels like Mario Golf Super Rush just came out, and we're already, you know, almost a week away from Skyward Sword HD. So, hey, we are giving away two copies of that game. Uh, head down into the description to enter. Uh, today's video, or tonight's video, since I am recording this at night, I've had quite a busy day. Uh, we have some stuff to go over here. Um, but before we get into it, you guys already see the title. Let's talk about that Switch OLED because, uh, well, you guys had a lot to say. In fact, here's a sample of comments. Ryla Ruth Sailor, not happy, and I blame you. Innocent Gamer, where is our pathetic YouTubers? Where is your Switch Pro? Aiden Snoo, no more rumors, no more speculation, no. Now you're going to make 600 clickbait videos on Switch 2, the next gen, for the next two to three years until that comes out. UC255 ain't even a pro, but no, you had to be an idiot like everyone else and claimed it would be, even as far as to mislead people with false and fake information from what you called a reliable source, that it was going to be a 4K docked, that it was going to have a new chipset, be more powerful, and everything else. Just face it. You knew all along there was never going to be a Switch Pro. You just dragged people along all this time, making them think it was going to happen. Well, all along, I was saying that all it was going to be was a simple revision with a 7-inch screen and improved stand. Now who's right and who's the idiot? John Gregorio. It's really cringe listening to you talk about this announcement like it's an actual Switch Pro as rumored. It's not. It's still the same Switch! No spec bumps at all. No features for TV mode players. Not even options for higher storage. It's 64 gigs. Anyways, just the usual <laughs> of the barrel effort by Nintendo for a way too high price. You and your other Switch Pro rumor obsessives on YouTube got played. Just admit it. I love how you stumbled over yourself trying to still support this concept of a 4K upscale. You profited off rumors. You were wrong. Admit it and move on. Formerly called Pro, says Philly Grand. This is for all intents and purposes, not the rumored Switch Pro. It is a Switch XL. There is no additional power, just a bigger form factor. Please stop moving the goalpost, just so y'all can pretend you haven't been wrong about a Switch Pro coming this year yet again. Ultima Keymaster, formerly called Pro, Nate, come on, admit you and everyone else who fell for all the Pro rumors were wrong already. This is not the Pro, this is the Vita screen on the Switch, and literally nothing more. David. Jagran. <laughs> was this that mighty Switch Pro was? Come on, man! You have to admit that all that hype about the Pro was just ridiculous. This Switch is okay, but everybody that was on the hype train needs to admit it that it was dumbed to be hyped about nothing. Gasula HT. So, a small upgrade, just like Nintendo always does. All those dozens and dozens of videos speculating about huge changes and catching up to the competition and catapulting into the latest console generation with the Switch Pro. And it's a small upgrade. And you called us dummies for saying it was going to be a small upgrade too. Please learn something from this, okay? Jason Meinhardt. 1080p TVs came out in 2005. 1080p phones came out in 2012. 4K TVs came out in 2012. 4K phones came out in 2014. Here is the year 2021, and Nintendo's new Switch OLED is... 720p handheld mode and 1080p docked. To me, this is insane! It should be at least 1080p in handheld by now, and 4K docked. Or 4K in both modes. Holy cow, they are so behind. 
Also, 8K TVs were shown at CES in 2012. The reason I bring that up is this year we had a lot of 8K TVs come out, and next year we'll likely have more, and Nintendo is barely doing 1080p. The wireless is still 802.11 AC Wi-Fi 5, which came out in 2011, but the spec was finalized in 2013, which is what the Switch is using. It should be on 802.11 AX, aka Wi-Fi 6, which came out in 2016, and specs were finalized in 2019. I have no idea what the LAN port is, because there's not much info on it. I hope it's at least a gigabyte. Red Meridian. Oh, please. This isn't the Switch Pro. This is something we knew was coming over a year ago. Bloomberg has once again outed themselves as fake news and propaganda. This Switch is not a pro or even close. I know you need to try and save face, but the better action would be to just let the pro go and stop making clickbait. No shoe, Sonic VR. Wow, this is worthless. Everyone. Everywhere. Ninja Nick. Dumb video. <laughs> LOL, laugh out loud. Look at that channel name, LMAO. <laughs> Colin Unger. No more rumors. <laughs> LOL. This isn't the Switch Pro. Nate already confirmed. You'll be back soon with new rumors. Tony. This was a sad day for Nintendo. Do better. Rhett M. You didn't even admit you were wrong after making one. 100 clickbait Switch Pro rumor videos. Alex Escobar. I guess we're going to deal with more of the same crappy 720p and sub 30 FPS coming from newer games for the next few years. Nintendo thinks they can still compete with a crappy 2015 SoC in 2021 and beyond alongside the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X. LOL! <laughs> the Alexander 707. I'm unsubscribing from this Nintendo Prime channel and Switch Force and all the rest of you Nintendo content creators who overhyped every single friggin' rumor that came out with regards to improved spec hardware. You guys are a waste of time, and this giddy schoolboy behavior when any new rumor comes out is just pathetic. Screw you guys, I'm signing out. Nintendo Prime. Sorry you feel that way. We're just trying to give our thoughts on rumors. You're free to have your own thoughts. The Alexander 707 replies, You are free to express yours as well, but we don't want your thoughts anymore because your product, aka your air quote thoughts, and the hype you deliberately bring with your thoughts suck. Your product that you market suck. Hence, I will no longer be a consumer to unreliable content. Hey, you're a cool guy. So, nothing personal, but if you want to win back consumers like me, and I bet there are many who were also disappointed by your channel, you just gotta become more reliable and more responsible with your content. Cheers, mate. Infamous One. Big flop! Someone who hasn't touched a Nintendo product since the N64! I became a Sony pony, baby! I was actually kind of hyped for the Switch Pro. As a second console to go with my PC, PS5 and my gaming PC, but now I'm not interested. Nintendo could have brought back Defectors had they actually released something good. But instead, this is what we get. Nintendo will continue to be at the kiddie table of gaming. Look, it took longer than I wanted to to get through all of that. Uh, but there's a reason that, that I decided to bring up all these comments. Uh, all of them, some of them being super critical of me, some of them being super critical of Nintendo themselves. I think all of it really stems from frustration with Nintendo. Uh, look, guys, we're going to do what we're going to do. In fact, we're going to do it again right now. Because I think bringing all those comments up is great because we have a bunch of rumors for you guys. <laughs> Let's get right into it. For starters, this part's not really a rumor. This comes from Eurogamer. Oh, no! Don't trust Eurogamer! Tom Phillips told us there's going to be 4K DLSS! Oh, no! Let's throw Eurogamer in the trash can! Fine. Do what you will. But here's what they had to say. Um, <laughs> so, uh, they talked about how there is actually a new uh, dev unit going out. And for some reason, this dev unit has more RAM in it. And it's kind of weird. For those who don't know, the dev units have 6 gigabytes of RAM in it. 
instead of the four that retail has. Uh, but yeah, hey, for some reason, uh, they're sending out new OLED ones that have eight gigs of RAM, and they don't really give a reason for the eight gigs to be there. Uh, I, I, so I'm, I'm not really sure if this means much. But I just wanted to bring it up because uh, Nintendo has basically told them uh, that, yeah, like, you know, people can make games for this OLED model without getting a new dev kit because there's no spec differences. Uh, but it says, so far, Nint uh, Nintendo and indeed game developers, the Switch OLED model is very much a business as usual, to the point where the platform holder is telling game makers that no new development kits are essential for making games, and there are no new technical requirements that require changing out standard switch iconography in game to accommodate the new model on top of that games running on switch oled have no idea they are running on anything other than a standard unit nintendo's developer documents reveal that there is no way for their games to query the system to figure out whether they are running on a switch oled or not with that said the firm does recognize the need for developers to test their games on the new screen with that in mind a new a dev development model is being made available to coexist alongside the s dev and e dev versions for reasons undisclosed by nintendo this machine ships with eight gigabytes of onboard memory in comparison to the six gigabytes in other development models and the four gigabyte in retail so again for some reason this mo this dev unit which has no difference in actual raw specs or anything uh for some reason is going to have eight gigs in it eight gigs of ram i don't know why Nobody knows why. It doesn't really make sense. Why would they give them double the RAM? Now, you're wondering why they might have more. Dev units traditionally have more RAM. Uh, this is just for compiling reasons. Because once a game is compiled and, 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 and torn down, uh, they, they can get it to run on that 4 gigs. Uh, but why would you give double the RAM? That's that's very strange. Uh I don't know what that means anything, but I wanted to mention it because it is something that is factually changed and Nintendo themselves has basically put out there. Uh, beyond all that, uh, Takahashi Matsuzuki uh, quoted Sirkin Toto. Uh, and here's what he said. Uh, Takahashi Matsuzuki, by the way, he is the originator, the OG of all of the Switch Pro rumors. And pretty much everything he said was right, except for it having 4K and DLSS. He was right about the release timing. He was right about the 7-inch OLED panel. Uh, looks like he's probably right about who's making the panel. Uh, right about when Nintendo goes, went into mass production. He's basically right on everything but 4K DLSS. And here is what he has quoted in his new article uh, dealing with the OLED Switch for $350. He says, this new Switch looks more like an interim model than a real upgrade to me. This might just be a dummy upgrade until Breath of the Wild 2 is ready and the component shortage is over next year. So he's chalking this up to, hey, look, uh, you know, we're not going to uh, see the new chip that he's heard about uh, possibly till next year because obviously there's been manufacturing issues and maybe that's been more impactful than Takahashi Machizuki was made aware of. In addition, Jeff Grubb. Oh, you guys know Jeff Grubb, right? Oh, Mr. Jeffrey Grubb. Uh, he is a video game uh, journalist and all that. We've covered him before. Uh, and he said, I still have only ever personally heard 2022 for Switch Pro. And if that is still happens, I'll continue to speculate that we'll have the 4K output with a significant more efficient chip with DLSS then. Anyone think this is the last Switch from a company that released six, yes, six 3DS models? Fair point. Oh, and yes, remember Sam is Hunter, of course. Let's just look at what she had to say on this because she actually never said we were getting a 4K Switch this year. Never. And in her history, never mentioned 4K Switch in 2021. Here is what she said. Get ready because this is going to be a bit of a long thread. A couple of months ago, I talked about two models in development, a more powerful version and one that is on par with the basic, but with some of the features of the new model. Nintendo Switch OLED is exactly the latter. I knew the OLED version would come out sooner. Not surprisingly, I had talked about there would be no major changes in terms of chipsets used for the 2021 console. But what are Nintendo's plans? Simple. For the first few months, make two models coexist to dispose of the basic one. Then, in 2022, place the OLED as the new base after a price cut. It's no coincidence that most of the accessories will be compatible between the two models and that the console itself inherits the Nintendo Switch like branding and written in brackets OLED version with the light it did not happen and that led to the coexistence of the two systems I know that many were disappointed to see this version announced the problem is that many reports confused information in their possession trying to always be the first to speak unfortunately it happens so it creates discontent of expectations unfulfilled but before a more powerful model is scheduled for late 2022 or 2023 
Everything depends on the sales trend in the coming year. This model, will it be a new generation? I doubt it. There are many projects that will continue to support the current Switch even until 2024. But it could be a console that will develop in a similar way to the Game Boy Color, initially as a pro model, and then become the main development console after a couple of years. The Switch generation isn't over yet, so don't worry, tons of games are coming in the next years. And Nintendo, by the way, does count Game Boy Color in the same generation as the original Game Boy. So just for clarification's sake, Samus Hunter is basically saying that Game Boy Color was eventually treated from a game development standpoint as a new generation. But Nintendo considers it the same generation as the OG Game Boy, even though it had a bunch of exclusive games. And eventually they stopped making games compatible with the old Game Boy, right? So it did eventually take over, which I think is something plausible here. So what does all this tell us? One, it's all rumors. So again, this is where we have to get into all those early comments. Remember all those people blasting me? Putting me on blast. Well, the funny thing about putting me on blast is, I have all the receipts, and all the receipts are right here on my channel. In fact, take a look at this clip. Yes, I tried to make a new tinfoil hat. It uh, didn't exactly go well. But let's just say we have some fresh rumors in about the Nintendo Switch Pro that sound very, very, very exciting, coming from multiple sources, including manufacturing. But again, the hat's on, so you know what that means. Huh. Strange. That came from a video talking about Switch Pro rumors. I was wearing a tinfoil hat, or in this case, it's, you know, you can call me out on it being a tinfoil hat. We call it a tinfoil hat because it's supposed to be a tinfoil hat reference. It's aluminum foil, okay, but whatever. I did that in several pro videos. I also um, noted in all these titles are rumors. And even when I didn't use the word rumor, I used may to infer it also may not. The point is that there has never been a guarantee about anything I have talked about with this platform for three years. I've been covering this stuff since Takahashi Machizuki first said something about it way back in 2017. I literally have never treated any of this stuff as fact. Now, I have my personal thoughts, my personal opinions. I do think a more powerful Switch exists somewhere, right? I think it's been in development and exists somewhere. Whether or not it ever releases, I have no idea. Whether or not it's Switch 2, um, Switch Pro, I, I mean, I, I don't even like that Pro moniker. I feel like the Pro moniker has been kind of soured because what happened here, and this, and this is what, this is just my opinion on all the coverage of this is, what happened is kind of similar to what Samus Hunter said, where everything was kind of jumbled together. Let's be clear about this. Switch Pro is a made-up name, completely made up, right? Obviously, the inference of the pro moniker is to liken it to a playstation 4 pro which was a more powerful playstation so the pro moniker infers more powerful but it's really just a fan made up moniker that we were just kind of you know taking all of the rumors of a new switch and just kind of compiling them under that moniker because we didn't know what to talk what to do what to talk about if you look at um, some other outlets, and this is credit to Digital Foundry, Digital Foundry said they, knew, they that they heard about two different units, that they heard about this unit that did get announced and a more powerful unit that's going to be you know released later. And if you look at Nintendo's release history, you know you had the 3DS, then you had the 3DS XL, then you had the new Nintendo 3DS, new Nintendo 3DS XL, 2DS, 2D XL. Like they did a bunch of different iterations and models of 3DS, and yeah. We'll have to wait and see if that's the trend we're going to see here with Switch because I think there is a general... Uh, there's a couple things happening here. One, you have Nintendo fans that are just generally upset because uh, games like Age of Calamity. Age of Calamity runs fine. It's fine. It's a fun game. Uh, but yeah, it does have some frame rate issues. But I want to be clear about those frame rate issues. Um, I don't know if you guys have played a Warriors game on the more powerful hardware, whether it's PlayStation 4, Xbox, you know, PC... It's got frame rate issues on everything. I think there's something up with the engine that they use for Warrior games that just doesn't play nice with hardware. I'm not saying that you can't find a way to overpower it and get um, some smooth frame rates. I'm just saying that the Warrior series actually is well known for, um, you know, for, for hard dips on every platform it's ever been on throughout the history of the franchise. So it's kind of, to me, a bad example. Uh, but Nintendo games have obviously had issues as well. We know obviously Xenoblade Chronicles 2 had frame rate issues and obviously resolution issues. Uh, we know that like Mario, uh, Super Mario Odyssey doesn't even hit a native 1080p, kind of stops at 900p. 
Uh, Breath of the Wild obviously had its issues, and that was a Wii U ported game, and you can argue maybe the issues were because it was a Wii U ported game, not made for the ground up, etc. So there's been there's been issues over the years, and we're not we can't ignore those. Uh, I, I think what happens is Nintendo fans obviously are ready for a more powerful Switch in some cases, uh, and people want to know why am I not more upset about this just being. A minor upgrade, I mean, not really even an upgrade to specs, but like an upgrade um, to some faults with the platform. The LCD panel uh, with that plastic screen isn't that great. The OLED panel is going to be factually better. It's also bigger. Uh, It's also got way better kickstand and finally an Ethernet port locally on the system. Uh, or on the dock, anyways. Uh, these to you know, these to me, better audio. Apparently, they they really focused on making this a better handheld experience, which is interesting when they have a system in the light specifically for handheld. Uh, but to me, and this this has been clear to me even before Samus Center put this out here yesterday, was that hey, this system, uh, this system feels like it's just a newer version of the version two, like this is like a version three switch, but with actual improvements. If you look at version two switch, it's the same switch as version one, just with a shrunk down chip because they shrunk down the chip for the light and in shrinking the chip, they closed one of the loopholes in the hacking community, you know, being able to cross those pins and get access. uh, They were able to close that in this, in this redesign of the chip. So, uh, this is kind of like that, except instead of redesigning the chip, they actually made actual quality of life improvements to the real Switch itself, and right now they're charging you more. Now, why are they charging you more? Well, because it is better than the current Switch. Now, you could argue what they should do is lower the price of the current Switch, but I think Nintendo's long-haul strategy is, you know, what Samus Hunter said. Nintendo's going to discontinue that version 2 switch eventually. And this new OLED switch is just going to be the main switch. It's going to be price dropped to, I'd say, $300 by holiday of next year even. Uh, Because I feel like they're going to slowly um, turn back development of the current switches and just ramp up the OLED versions and let that be the lead dog for them. I think that is their plan. They ended up doing this, by the way, with the 3DS and the 3DS XL. Uh, they stopped making the 3DS after like a year. I don't know if people are aware of this, that that OG fat 3DS, they had the light version and then they had the um, XL version and they let the XL version overtake uh, and they stopped making the fat version the original version of 3ds quite quickly there so it was so i think that's what's going to happen here and when that happened they price dropped the 3d xl to the price point of the 3ds and then they had the new 3ds obviously come out new 3ds xl and obviously they had the 2ds and and 2ds xl versions as well eventually uh so yeah it, it, it's interesting here when i look at that and i start to think to myself you know what they're on to something here um the switch is going to have a really long life cycle and if Samus Hunter, who I don't know if they're, you know, correct, but if, if she is saying that, look, she knows about that Nintendo has plans for Switch games all the way through 2024, uh, at least through 2024, which is quite a ways away, uh, yeah, it would make sense if there was an upgraded model somewhere in there, a new Switch, that maybe that Switch comes in at 350 uh, and around the time that one's going to get announced and come in at 350 they price drop this one uh, to 300 and discontinue the other one. I, I feel like there is a pattern here uh, to do this. Now, some people are obviously still banking on the uh, upgraded Switch coming out around the same time as Breath of the Wild 2. We'll have to wait and see on that. I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure if it would even come out, if, if they would release uh, new models um, a year apart like that. I, I don't know. Obviously, it's been two years since the Switch Lite. So we'll have to wait and see. But, uh, yeah, I look, guys, it, it is true to a point that rumors on new hardware aren't going to go anywhere so long as the rumors exist, right? All I can do is is give you the information that's out there and then give you my opinions. As always, everybody needs a hyper sponsor. I talked about this heading into E3. I'm going to talk about this again. No one is responsible for your hype and your disappointment because of that hype than yourself. A lot of people have been messaging me trying to get me to apologize or um, hitting me in those comments, hitting me hard to say, it's your fault. You need to apologize. I was right. You were wrong. Huh? Wrong about what? I was just reporting on things and giving opinions, just like they were giving their own opinions as well. My position as a content creator is to, one, deliver information to you, and two, give you my thoughts on that information because that's what I want to do. 
I care more about the conversation around the information than the raw information on its own. If I just wanted to deliver you raw information, this video would have been two minutes long. I would have just read off all these tweets and all this stuff and just called it a day. But instead, I decided that, you know what, I wanted to kick off this video with a really long monologue of all these comments just trashing my channel and trashing Nintendo and then kind of get into, hey, look, we are going to keep talking about rumors because as long as they exist, we're going to keep talking about them. You guys need to be responsible for yourselves. And I tell this to my children all the time. I tell this to anyone who faces disappointment in life. Instead of pointing fingers, look in the mirror and ask yourself, what did I do to cause myself to be disappointed? Look, I want a more powerful switch. Am I disappointed that this switch isn't that? I guess, yeah, I would have liked it to be that. I would like the Switch OLED to be the more powerful switch. But here's the bottom line. I was never disappointed with the Switch I currently have. And if you are disappointed with the Switch you currently have, I'm sorry. And if you're a Sony pony, like the one commenter said, that was waiting to be won back, what are you waiting to be won back from? I never sold the Switch Pro as something that's going to compete with PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X. That was never going to be a thing. It was a pipe dream. I kept saying, at best, it was going to be like Xbox One levels of power boost. Um... And even if it was smaller, which I did mention, by the way, it could be a smaller power boost, that it would be something akin to, you know, at least you know, something like the new 3DS, which was a bigger boost than people realize, but um, it, it still wasn't, you know, one of those next-gen kind of leaps. It's only like people expected Switch Pro or whatever that Switch is, uh, or this Switch, to be a next-gen leap, which was not what we talked about. This was always just a mid-gen refresh that might have more power, and, and that could be next year. could be the year after. I have no idea. It might not happen at all. It might be a next-gen Switch. We have other people claiming that, you know, it, maybe it'll be a VR system. I have no idea. Here's what I do know, okay? Nobody has to buy this thing. If it's not for you, it's fine. I was always happy with my current Switch. When I'm playing Mario Golf Super Rush, I didn't think to myself, man, I really wish this system output in 4K. When I'm playing uh, Metroid Dread later this year or Skyward Sword HD next year, I'm not going to be like, man, I really wish this system output in 4K, even though I do game on a 4K TV. And why is that? Because I'm already happy with what I have. We had that one commenter bringing up 8K TVs. Yeah, there's 8K TVs on the market. Can you afford one? I mean, I'm going to load up Amazon.com right now. I'll show you guys um, what 8K TVs cost. Like, just the, just the cheapest 8K TV I can find. So, 8K TV. Uh, let's, just, let's just do this. Um, is there an under 500 one? We have... Oh, here we go. Uh, we have an Elite Screens Sable. You know, there's, there's, a, top, there's a top quality brand right there. Uh, B2 135-inch projector screen. Not even... Not even including the projector. This is just a screen that's going to support 8K Ultra HD. Um, here is uh, the next one is a Samsung QN32 Q50 RA FXZA flat 32 inch. Oh, 4K. Oh, look. Nothing affordable is that. Okay. Maybe maybe at a thousand plus. Maybe we're looking at this wrong. Maybe we're looking at this wrong. Maybe, maybe, maybe we're, we're dreaming of 8K at 500, right? All right, so let's just go back to the basic search then, right? Instead of trying to find some cheap one. Oh, look. Samsung 65-inch in-class Neo QLED 8K QN 800A series 8K Ultra HD Quantum HDR 32X Smart TV with Alexa built in. $2,997. Now, you can find a couple smaller ones, like so 54 you can find a couple smaller ones, like a 55-inch at 1800 And yes, eventually 8K TVs are going to become affordable. Uh, I don't think it's going to become affordable anytime in the next few years. Uh, I think if you get a decade out from now, it's going to be like 4K is now, where you can get 4K TVs for like 300 bucks at Walmart, let alone Black Friday deals. Um, you know, I, I think it's going to be something like that, where a decade from now, 8K TVs are just going to replace 4K organically um, as they try to just you know only make one type of screen instead of making 1080Ps and 4K. They can just make Q, uh, QLED 8K stuff and go with that, and it'll eventually the prices will come down. But that's not anytime soon. Like, why does 8K even matter? PlayStation 5 has 8K on the box. How many of you people own an 8K TV? And by the way, when I talk about these 8K TVs, I don't even know if these are good 8K TVs, right? We Just being 8K doesn't make it a good TV. Just like being 4K doesn't mean it's a good TV. There's a lot of stuff that goes into high 
quality televisions, especially when you want the best viewing experience, the best gaming experience. Uh, you know, it, it, there's just a lot to consider uh, when you're talking about these high resolution screens uh, than just, oh my God, it says 8K on the box. So anyways, the point I'm trying to make here is, look, this is a really long video. There was a lot of news in here. There was a lot of people pissed off. At the end of the day, there's going to be more people pissed off down in the comments. I'm going to keep doing what I do because I love what I do. I have so much fun, guys. Talking about rumors is fun. Speculating is fun. And if it's not fun for you because you can't control yourself, then I'm sorry. I'm not on Nintendo Defense Force here. If you're not into the Switch, don't buy it, right? No one has to buy the Switch OLED. It's cool. I never felt a need for a new Switch, to be completely honest. Because what do I play Switch for? I play Switch personally to play exclusives. That's just me. Used to not be the case, but I have a PlayStation 5. I am blessed. I have a PlayStation 5, have an Xbox Series X, and I have a gaming PC. I don't need multi-platform games on Switch. I like them being there, but I don't need them. I play it for the exclusives. Shin Megami Tensei 5 coming up. Metroid Dread. These are the kind of games I play Switch for. And I'm already happy with my Switch purchase. I'm thrilled with it, and I'll be thrilled with my current Switch for years to come. I'm going to be able to play Breath of the Wild Freaking 2 on it next year. So it's in 3 on this Switch. That's awesome. I don't need the QLED, or the OLED, I should say. I'm going to get it because I like tech, and this is technically a better Switch in some aspects. So I'm going to get it, plus I'm a Switch YouTuber. So call me a shill or whatever you want. I really don't care. I also bought a billion 3DSs at one point. That's just what I do. Plus, guys, can we just say that white, that white version of the Switch uh, Q, uh, OLED? Oh my gosh, is that not a Metroid Dread Switch? I'm sorry, that white that, that's a Metroid Dread Switch. I'm just throwing, I, I know it doesn't say it officially, but it releases the same day as Metroid Dread, so I'm gonna call it a Metroid Dread Switch. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's not a special edition and it won't be hard to get, but yeah, well, at least eventually. So think what you want. Yeah, I'm sure rumors are going to continue to exist on a more powerful switch. I'll probably, you know, I might swing away from the switch pro moniker. I feel like the switch pro moniker has been a bit soured. Um, maybe we'll just start calling it, you know, a new, more powerful switch or a new Nintendo switch. Or something, right? We'll come up with a moniker that, that maybe other people aren't using to delineate uh, that this is talking about a potential next-gen or more powerful Switch. Uh, this is just talking about the current OLED Switch. Uh, I don't know. You guys let me know uh, your thoughts on all this. I'm sure the comments are going to be hot fire as always. I am Nathaniel RoboJance from Nintendo Prime, and I'll catch each and every one of you in the next video.